humans have rules for everything. Rules for diplomacy, rules for war, rules of social events. They even have rules for which eating utensils to use when. For a species that thrives so much on chaos, you would imagine they would be free of them. Even their divided nations, the Reich, the Alliance, and the Nomads all have rules for how to engage with one another, and rules on how to deal with someone breaking those rules. Their rules for war, though. Those are the rules you should be the most afraid of, because you never want to push them against it. Humans are one of the few species that have spare antimatter, running their ships entirely off energy pulled from the void. Wild creatures, deaf to the void, null space they call it, as they are, and secure from effects. They do have antimatter reactors on some of their larger warships, designed to power systems as the main engine is directed to other things, but they never need to keep it around. Naturally, the chaotic beings they are, they have turned it into a weapon, dropped it once, and then collectively agreed that they would never use it on a planet. Space was fair game, but never on a planet, same as null energy weapons. Inhumane was the word they used. As things go in the galactic sphere, tensions formed one day. The Trevians wanted a system claimed by the Reich, claiming they weren't using it and that the Trevian people would benefit from its integration into their space. The Reich disagrees. The Galactic Trade Commission agreed with the Reich, and the Trevians file a declaration of war. They were advised not to, and as was universally expected, it didn't go well. Their invasion of the system was met by harsh retaliation, their fleets crippled, their ground forces either crushed or captured, and the system became a small prison system to house the Trevian soldiers. They were treated well, more human rules, but they were prisoners nevertheless. To the Trevian hierarchs, this was unacceptable to be handed such a loss. So they pushed to the war, and the Reich pushed back, now pushing them back into their own space. System after system fell to Imperial occupation, as the vastly superior Reich fleets pushed out the under-equipped and under-supplied Trevian military. They grew desperate, and in their desperation, they made a fatal error. A freighter was stolen, and taken to a Reich world far away from the front lines, a massive population center. The freighter broke through the patrol ships and plummeted to the surface, its hull riddled with holes, its crew likely dead before the freighter even got close to the city. It mattered not, as the flaming wreckage managed to transport its cargo to the planet's surface still, and in a single moment, a small star formed in the planet's surface. A hydrogen fusion bomb, roughly a 50 megatons. The death toll was measured by the millions, and the war ground to a halt. The Trevian government had violated a rule, a big rule of war. At all costs, avoid civilian casualties. In all of the war, the humans had endeavoured to ensure that all civilians were treated well. Some argued better than their own government ever had. No cities bombed, and extra care to avoid civilian installations. When it could not be avoided, civilians were warned ahead of time, given time to evacuate before a facility was destroyed. And now, without warning, a planet outside of the theatre of war had been attacked, and almost exclusively civilians died. The humans were mad! The Galactic Trade Commission had strict rules about members interfering in other member wars unless there were due cause or an official call for aid through the GTE. The human bloc disregarded this rule. Alliance cruisers appeared over Trevian trade posts, enforcing strict blockades of those wishing to trade with Trevian people. Ships were warned, and if they refused, were boarded, their cargo seized, and the crews imprisoned. Nomad patrol vessels appeared out of nowhere and struck down Trevian mining and trading ships, disabling their engines and forcing them to turn around, making them unable to provide outside trade. All of this was protested at the GTC's highest courts, but it was delayed in and passed to other courts, officially because the Commission did not have the information to rule on the case, 
but in reality, they were afraid of drawing ire from the enraged humans. The Reich, though. The Reich shifted in a way no one expected. They had been gentlemanly in the air so far. Taking prisoners wherever possible and making efforts to minimalize casualties had changed their tactics. Military vessels were carved up, star-based left to vent into space, and planet-based installations were bombed from orbit. The human governments held a meeting behind closed doors on the backwater cradle of humanity, Earth, and discussed what should happen. According to reporters, it was a series of talks to discuss offering surrender. Military leaders gathered, and apparently the Kaiser herself made an appearance. Some agreement was reached, and from the human block, an ultimatum was sent to the Trevian Hierarchs. You are to immediately surrender, standing down your entire armed forces and the resignation of your government with the installation of a provisional government to be overseen by the Alliance. There would be no additional terms. The Trevians laughed and said they would never accept such wild terms, that their culture had stood for a millennia, and it would outlive this war. They began ramping up their war efforts, their people tired and their supplies stretched thin. One more message was sent, a video message, played across every subspace channel, every civilian and military frequency, and plastered all over the Galnet. It showed the Kaiser in her war room, adorned in a military uniform flanked by two members of the military. From behind the brim of her crush cap, a pair of hazel eyes stared into the video recorder with a cold resolve that made people shiver and stop. To the Trevian people, this war has raged on for long enough and we offered you peace with reasonable terms considering your actions. In return of our gesture, your leaders have spat in our faces. In three days time, we will have our revenge for the millions killed. Abandon your capital city now and be spared. Stay and perish. The message repeated over and over. Seeing the advancing fleets of the Reich, many imagined they meant to bomb the city from orbit. However, anyone who attempted to leave was arrested. Transports were shot down, and curfew and martial law was declared. The hierarchs planned to make martyrs to ensure even in defeat humanity suffered for its crimes. The day came, and three carrier groups arrived in orbit of Trevia immediately engaging the defence forces. The rear carrier, however, offloaded six Gunsiger ground attack ships. The massive flying wings, escorted by their Falk fighters, descended into the atmosphere, five of them taking up the forward position in a V around the sixth. As they descended through the atmosphere, the first five opened their four massive bays, and from them deployed racks of missiles. Four to a bay, four bays to a bomber, eighty total missiles rocketed out from their berths and into the city below, slamming into targets at hypersonic speeds and devastating the city's defensive measures in a single swoop. In that moment, realization dawned on the people, civilian and military alike, that this was an end. Then the city just kind of stopped. People stepped into the streets and looked up the forms of the massive wings visible in the setting sun. Families hugged, others still just stood and wept. The sixth bomber opened his bay doors, three payloads of what looked like observation drones, and one massive singular payload, in a shape anyone could recognise as a bomb. Clamps released, and the drones dropped on their anti-gravity systems and began to descend towards the outskirts of the city as the bomb fell free. Fins opened up, guiding the unit for its target for the government building. It whistled through the air, specifically designed tubes creating a banshee's wail as it fell through the setting sun, slow enough people could track it as it fell. It seemed like time froze as Trevian stood and awaited their annihilation. It never came. The bomb slammed into the building and slid its way through the halls, carving a path of destruction before finally coming to a rest in the Hierarch's Hall. Empty as it was as the leaders cowered in fear in bunkers. The device opened up, 
shedding its casing and revealing a rule book, neatly labelled the Geneva Convention 2446 edition. A single, single band was placed from the sum, which would open the book to Article 51, Section 6. The first page of the book was neatly signed with three signatures. The signature of the Kaiser, Lena II, Director of the Alliance of Independent Worlds, Director Victor Alessandro Martin, and the Central Authority of the Nomads one David Blaine. A small note was scribbled on the cover. The people that stood outside, though, watched as the sky lit up in brilliant bursts of blinding blue light. Small stars formed in orbit temporarily as antimatter warheads devastated the defense fleets, rendering them asunder. The war was over. Following the aftermath, the Hierarchs were recovered from their bunker, and under the watchful eye of the Alliance and Reich, the provisional Trevian government tried them for crimes against the people. While the humans had objected, the Hierarchs were hung, and eventually the provisional government became the Republic of Trevia. The book was placed on display in a library attached to the Senate, opened to Article 51, Section 6, for all to read. The handwritten note in the front was copied to a plaque in Human Common and Trevian, which read, Humans have rules, and even your barbarism will not break them. <laughs>